Hey guys, Bill here from Keystone Weapon. What's going on? I got some uh, Facebook feedback from you guys that you want to see some uh, info on the 22 TCM as far as load data and stuff like that goes. And I really appreciate that feedback. Keep those ideas coming because I'll give you guys whatever I can. I got a little bit of experience in a lot of different areas. So, um, first, with that being said, I have no liability when it comes to loading TCM. Uh, there's not a whole ton of us out there that do it. There's some forums out there based on it. You'll probably see some of my forum postings under uh, Keystone Weapon BK. That's one of my handles on some of the 1911 forums. I got similar handles on a couple other forums. But with that being said, this is not something that uh, you're going to want to do and, and jump into if you just load 9mm for a, for a living or whatever. This is not the easiest thing in the world to, to load. It's not impossible. Lots of us do it. Well, not that many of us do it, but I do. Um, so, uh, 22 TCM, right? Great cartridge, awesome, super fast, big, loud, makes explosions, and is super fun to shoot because of its low recoil. Um, so, obviously, uh, a lot of it goes into brass preparation for loading this cartridge. There's a lot of powder charges to figure out and things like that. But what I wanted to talk about today and show you a little bit of footage of, some of it came out like crap because I went to the range and it was just, nothing was, it was windy and cold and everything. But I want to show you guys some of the stuff that I use. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about velocity. I want to share some of my learnings with this cartridge. So um, I've done a little bit of everything with this. Uh, let me hunt through this little bin here. I'm sure I can find some that are that are strange. So... Like you can see this guy right here, hopefully, this is a this is a actually a, a Remington uh, casing and I'm sure there's some, some Lake City and Hornady and stuff in here. I will tell you firsthand that the Armscore branded brass is the best stuff. Um, before I started accumulating all this stuff, I was at the mercy of creating my own brass. And when I was doing that, I was using this little drill master guy here, this little cheap old little little saw, which is awesome actually. These are great if you can find them at Harbor Freight for like 30 bucks. I had made a jig so that I could cut off brass similar to the way the guys from 300 Blackout do it. And then eventually once I got a little bit tired of making it with my jig, I actually bought a jig off eBay that can do 300 blackout and 22 TCM. These little soles are awesome. They're super fast. You'll totally cut your finger off if you're not paying attention. So as far as doing the brass, you're going to need a map gas torch or whatever you use to anneal. Annealing is going to be key or else you will destroy your dies or crush your casings or whatever. Um... A couple other things that are important is, uh, well, let me grab a casing. Sorry to be, hopefully you're not, uh, hopefully none of you get seasick here. Um, I do apologize. So this is just a, a, a once fired arm score, clean, nice little piece of brass, right? And here's my midsize TCM. Isn't she a beauty? Um, all these, uh, pieces of info I'm going to share with you guys are based off the midsize. Now, Rich Wright on the, uh, Facebook forum there, and somebody who's going to help me out with some of this, he's got a full size, and we're going to compare. We're going to do some comparison numbers down the road here of the full size versus the mid size because the velocities seem to be quite different. Also, I want to reach out to uh, Tony White. Hey, Tony, I don't know if you're listening, but he's got a, a six inch uh, custom TCM that Freddie Craig built him, and I want to see if we can compare some numbers too, so to see what what kind of velocity numbers we're getting. One of the big things is when you're, if you are deciding to load this, is making sure that you're plunk testing it after you, uh, after you resize that brass. You can see how that brass, that brass right there, does not drop in the barrel. It'll go in, but it ain't gonna be nice. In fact, to get it out, I'm gonna use the the extractor to get the thing out. You can see how it actually hasn't slid all the way forward. I lied, but uh, it, it does happen where they won't chamber in the gun. And, and, and what you need to do is you need to make sure that you're backing down that resizing die. And I swear, it sounds ridiculous. Those of you that are rifle loaders already know this trick. But taking that resizing die, and if you resize this piece of brass and it will not plunk test into your barrel, which I highly recommend you do some plunk testing while you're doing this, while you're getting all your stuff set up. If it won't plunk test into your barrel, bringing this down, you know, a quarter, a sixteenth of a turn at a time, even though it seems stupid because it's already touching the shell plate, just keep bringing it down so you can cam that over. 
The other thing, uh, as far as loading this goes, is I haven't found any difference between small pistol and small rifle primers. I use a little bit of everything. Um, I haven't found any differences as, as far as velocity, as far as reliability. Small rifle primers work, small pistol primers work. I know that Fred had cautioned originally not to use Magnum primers. I don't know if anybody has used them. I don't, because he said not to. But then again, they also said to stay between the 9 and 10 grain range originally too. But keep in mind, they have some liability to cover themselves too. So they don't want to they don't want to see you blow your gun up. Um, and obviously reloading for the 22 TCM is, is not the safest thing in the world because it is a high pressure, small caliber, mighty little cartridge. Um, like I said, I use a lot of W296 or I got some back here somewhere, H110, which are the same powder, Hodgson and Winchester, they come from the same place. Um, and I typically run them at a lower grain. So let's say, let's let's go over some data here after I say, show you some shooting. All right, guys. So we're gonna run a few factory arm store rounds through my uh, TCM midsize here, just to get a get a baseline. And uh, hopefully, I'm not gonna shoot my chronograph, and hopefully, I'm not gonna shoot my phone. So it's uh, pretty chilly out here. But uh, let's run a few through it and see what we're hitting. 1855, 1854, 1857, and 1846. So they're pretty damn consistent. I'll give them that. Uh, give me a few moments here, and we're going to run a couple different rounds through this thing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run these in order. Uh, from lowest charge to highest charge. I imagine these first, uh, this one here, by my experience, should fail to eject, so you may have a little bit of a pause there. And I will be pausing a little bit to give the chronograph time to catch up, but I'm gonna go ahead and run these through. I'm gonna write down the results and we'll go over them after this. All right, we're all loaded up and ready to go, so let's, uh, let's let them rip and see what we get. We're gonna start with that 9.2. This one ought to be interesting because this is actually one that I loaded with 10.1 grains of 2400 based on uh, something I was taking a look at as an experiment. So let's uh, take a look here and we will uh, see what she cronies out at. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it'll actually cycle, but we're going to try it out. 1900 feet per second. Interesting. So you saw some shooting. Let's go back and review that. Again, this is with a 22 TCM midsize. So this is the shorter barrel, right? And uh, I did a little bit of uh, some some de decent loads here. Uh, I started with H110, W296. And uh, we were first starting off at 9.2, 1603 feet per second. This is typically the super low end of the spectrum. And I wouldn't personally just me i don't like to load anything under like 9.6 because i don't get completely reliable ejection out of my weapon because it's not creating that pressure that it needs um 10 1748 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11.3 11
I'm not saying to try this, but I'm going to look into it a little bit more. Maybe not with my baby here, but uh, I'm interested to see if there's some applications for 2400 or if I'm playing with danger. I might be, so be careful out there. Um, the other things that I wanted to talk about were some of the best practices with reloading the 22 TCM. So, uh, big thing is going to be case lube. Make sure that you're lubing uh, those uh, casings. Make sure that if you're not using TCM brass, or even if you are using TCM brass, I don't personally do it with, with uh, arm score brass. But a little bit of annealing is nice because these casings do like to go into the die a little hard. Now I'm using the Lee dies. I know some of you are probably using the Hornady dies and every one of these are different. I mean, I probably have one of the first sets of dies ever made for this caliber. Um, I also do typically put just a little bit of a tiny uh, chamfer on mine. I'm going to turn this guy on here. So while I, when I clean my primer pocket, clean my pocket, a lot of times I'll just put just a little bit of a chamfer on there, just enough to, to allow it to slide in a little easier. And I'll tell you what, these are a little bit of a bugger getting your fingers in here to, to feed these. So if anybody figures out the feed lip size, that'd be, that'd be amazing if you can get a leaf feeder for it. You know, I have them for my, for some of my other presses and, and they're, they're quite excellent. So like, Here's an example. Now this is a 45, but you know, that makes loading the 45 really simple because you just fill the tube up and, and everything goes. But again, I'm using the I'm using the arm score 40 grain. Uh, these little guys, the little uh, hollow point, uh, I won't focus, but whatever. These are the typical you know, arm score ones from Ammo Supply Warehouse. Unfortunately, the prices keep going up, but as you can see, I, I got a couple. Um, and uh, honestly, their factory ammo is the best stuff there is. I mean, you saw the spreads. Uh, maybe you didn't. I can't remember if I cut that part out, but the, uh, the extreme spreads on these are awesome. They're very, very similar. So I, I always really like their factory ammo, but I do reload for it. The ones I like to load for it are right around the 10 grain range. They're like, they're like 10, 10, 2, something like that. They're a little slower. You know, they, they shoot like those velocities we were talking about, but they're just as loud. They're just as accurate. And accuracy hasn't seemed to really change with different powder charges. They, they seem to pretty much hit on target at the distances I shoot anyway. So I haven't really had any sort of an issue, but uh, I just wanted to share some of that stuff. Um, if there's anything else you guys want to know, you know, throw in some comments in Facebook or whatever, I'll try to help you out. But remember, I, I, I'm not an expert on this. I don't have any kind of liable, you know, background with this other than me experimenting a lot on my own. So, um, you know, Feel free to ask any questions, and if there's something else you guys want to see, or something you want to uh, you want to explore in your 1911, or you want to see me do on one of mine, I'll uh, try to help you out. Thanks, and have a great day. Shoot safe, guys.